For years, we've been taught that faster growth means more fertilizer, more inputs, more bottles, more bags, but, you know, if you step back and look at how plants actually evolved and how farmers once grew food for centuries without synthetic help, you realize something important was lost along the way. In Japan, especially before modern agriculture took over, growers focus less on feeding plants and more on building living soil that feeds roots naturally. The result? Crops with deep, explosive root systems, stronger resilience, and steady growth, without constant fertilization. Today on Soil Power, I want to walk you through that forgotten approach. This isn't theory or hype, it's a soil strategy you can use right now whether you're growing vegetables, fruit trees, or flowers. And once you understand it, you'll stop asking what fertilizer should I use, and start asking the better question, how do I wake up my soil? Most gardeners judge success by what they see, taller plants, greener leaves, faster growth, but underground is where everything is decided. Roots aren't just straws sucking up nutrients, they're living organs that communicate with microbes, release sugars, and shape the soil around them. When roots grow faster and deeper, plants become more drought-resistant, more disease-resistant, and far more productive. Japanese farmers understood this long before soil tests and bottled nutrients existed. Instead of pushing plants with quick nitrogen, they focused on creating soil conditions that invite roots to expand naturally. When roots feel safe, oxygenated, and biologically active, they multiply, often several times faster than in compacted or sterile soil. That's the real secret. At the heart of this system is a simple idea. Plants don't want fertilizer, they want biology. Traditional Japanese growers built soils rich in microbial life using forest-inspired practices. They noticed that plants growing near woodland edges developed stronger roots than those in open-tilled fields. Why? Because forest soils are loose, layered, carbon-rich, and biologically alive. Instead of disturbing soil every season, they protected it, and, instead of pouring nutrients on top, they created environments where microbes unlock nutrients already present in the ground. When you do this, roots don't just grow, they search, branch, and colonize soil aggressively. That's where the three times faster effect comes from. One of the most overlooked factors in root development is carbon. You know, roots just don't grow well in mineral-only soil. They really thrive when carbon is present in these stable, slow-decomposing forms. Japanese farmers, for example, have traditionally used materials like leaf litter, rice straw, aged wood matter, and fermented plant residues, not to feed plants directly, but to feed soil organisms. As microbes consume carbon, they create these microscopic tunnels glue soil particles into aggregates and release growth-stimulating compounds. This process makes soil softer, better aerated, and honestly, just easier for roots to penetrate. So, if your soil feels hard, crusty, or lifeless, roots are going to struggle no matter how much fertilizer you apply. Carbon fixes that, not overnight, but, you know, permanently. This is where, you know, a lot of gardeners start to feel a bit uneasy. If there's no fertilizer, where did the nutrients actually come from? Well, the answer is, they were already there. Most soils, honestly, contain vast reserves of phosphorus, potassium, calcium, and all kinds of trace minerals. The real issue is that they're locked up. Without biology, plants just can't get to them. Japanese soil systems, for example, encouraged fungi and bacteria that are really good at mineral unlocking. Mycorrhizal fungi, in particular, can extend root systems way farther than roots could ever reach on their own. And in exchange for sugars, these fungi deliver nutrients and water directly to the plant. When this system is working, adding fertilizer actually becomes, well, counterproductive. High salt concentrations suppress those important microbial partnerships and cause roots to become lazy and shallow. Strong roots grow fastest when they work, not when everything is spoon-fed. 
Another key element of this lost method is minimal disturbance. Traditional Japanese gardens were rarely deep-tilled. Soil was built in layers, much like a forest floor. Organic matter stayed near the surface, where microbes and fungi thrive. Below that, mineral soil remained structured and stable. When soil layers stay intact, roots grow downward with confidence. When soil is constantly turned, compacted or exposed, roots hesitate and branch poorly. If you want faster root growth, reduce how often and how deeply you disturb your soil. Let biology do the work for you. You don't need rice paddies or ancient tools to use this approach. Start by protecting your soil surface. Keep it covered with organic matter, mulch, leaves, straw, or compost. This moderates temperature, feeds microbes, and creates the same conditions found in healthy forest soil. Next, stop chasing quick fixes. Instead of feeding plants every week, focus on feeding the soil seasonally. Add carbon-rich materials and let them break down slowly. Avoid excessive digging. If you must loosen soil, do it gently and only where needed. Roots respond best to stable environments. Finally, give your soil time. This isn't an instant growth hack, it's a compounding system. Each season, root growth improves. Each year, soil becomes easier to work, more resilient, and more productive. With rising fertilizer costs, declining soil health, and unpredictable weather, gardeners can no longer rely on input-heavy methods. You know, the Japanese soil approach isn't just historical, it's actually future-proof. It builds systems that get stronger over time instead of weaker, and it turns your garden into a self-feeding ecosystem rather than a dependent one. And once your soil reaches that point, plants don't just survive, they thrive. This lost soil secret isn't about doing more, it's about doing less and letting nature finish the job. If you focus on roots instead of leaves, biology instead of bottles and soil life instead of shortcuts, you'll grow plants that outperform anything pushed with fertilizer alone. That's the power of real soil. If this article helped you see your garden differently, make sure to subscribe to Soil Power on YouTube for more deep, practical soil wisdom. Share this with a fellow gardener who's tired of chasing fertilizers, and let's rebuild living soil together, one garden at a time.